Hello there, Michael. Hello, David. Well, first of all, tell us why you chose this book. Well, uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, I'm interested in and involved in uh, a couple of early stage companies. And this book sets itself up right on the cover as the good to great for small business. So that got my interest. Secondly, it also says on the cover, it's based on a five-year, 7,000 company study. That's a lot of research, so worth reading, I suppose. And, and third, one of the breakthrough companies that the book identifies uh, was SAS. Well, I'm always interested in finding out about SaaS. Very good. So, so what makes a small company a breakthrough company? These early stage companies a breakthrough company? Well, it's, it's like good to great. You know, it, it argues that it's uh, about leadership and uh, company culture. Let me give you the top six issues uh, that it identifies. One, having the leader put the company's development ahead of his or her own. Logical. Two, having the guts to make a few large bets. He calls this upping the ante. In fact, there's a whole chapter about uh, poker strategy. Number three is building a company around integrity. I agree with that. Four is moving from small and agile to proprietary advantages. I uh, hope you've got some. Uh, five, uh, getting help from wherever you can. He calls this scaffolding. And number six is getting everyone in the company to challenge assumptions. All good advice. Now, now tell us about the companies that were studied as breakthrough companies, the extraordinary companies. Well, he identified nine, nine out of 7,000. And the one he, ones he talked about most were uh, Chico's, FAS, Express Personnel, Paychex, Polaris, Intuit, the Staubach Company, and Fastenal. You touched on SAS at the beginning. What does he have to say about SAS? Well, <laughs> there's not much about SAS in it, even though it made the, the top nine. Um, you know, there's the usual stuff about it being a great company to work for and people are committed to it and customer service. Well, were the other case studies more informative? You know, not really. Um, the book jumps around. It makes a few points about this company and then jumps over there and makes a few points about that company. And then at the end of the chapter, there's sort of summary headings about what was covered. Um, it's also interesting. I mean, I thought the case studies were a bit simplistic. And some of them, like, like Polaris, which is eulogized, I mean, it's a good company, but boy, it's had a couple of tough years lately. Now, we've heard you say you're a small business guy. Um, what do you take away from the book? How would it help you build a, a breakthrough company? You know, David, when I sat down to, to think about this review, well, it was about a month ago that I'd read the book, and I really couldn't recall anything that earth-shattering uh, that I'd taken away from it. Um, I guess I have a problem with books that are based on these huge surveys. You know, I'd rather read Michael Dell's book about building a business or, or Jack Welsh. I mean, people who've been there, done that. But you said the book calls itself good to great for small companies. That, that sounds like an important book. Uh, that's an important subject. The important book has yet to be written. Okay. So the verdict, thumbs up or thumbs down? Well, I think the book is, is selling quite well, so I, I think I'm going against the wind on this one, but uh, I'd give it one thumb down for uh, simplistic case studies and uh, one thumb down for organization and writing. Um, I'm afraid this book didn't break through with me. Okay, fair enough. Thanks a lot, Michael. Always great talking with you.